A goal was to infiltrate the Protestant movement and sabotage the churches with division, scandal, false doctrine, and to even preach from their pulpits, just for starters. This is where the devices of several Jesuits come into play, and what they did with their newfound interest in the scriptures that for centuries they had kept concealed from the common man. In desperation to remove the finger pointing at Papal Rome as the Antichrist, a Spanish Jesuit from Salamanca named Francisco Rivera, 1537-1591, devised a corrupted interpretation of the prophetic scriptures about the coming Messiah revealed in Daniel 9, 24-9, as commonly referred to as the 70 weeks of Daniel prophecy. In a 500-page commentary on the Apocalypse published around 1580, Ribera took Daniel 9.27 and the confirmation of the covenant by Christ's death on the cross as the final sacrifice of atonement, which brought about the end of oblations in the midst of the symbolic week, and said that it was not about Christ, but about a one-man antichrist that will appear during a seven-year end-time great tribulation. Carrying on the agenda of the now deceased Ribera in his attempt to hide the papal antichrist was an Italian cardinal, Robert Bellarmine, 1542 to 1621, the most notorious of all Jesuit controversialists. Where Ribera had started in corrupting the year-date symbology in the book of Daniel and the blasphemous reversal with Christ being the antichrist in Daniel 9:27 perverting the day-year interpretation completely and claimed that Daniel, John, and Paul's writings have no connection whatsoever to the papacy. In his book, Polemic Lectures Concerning the Disputed Points of the Christian Belief Against the Heretics of This Time, Bellarmine continues to promote the Ribera lie of a one-man antichrist that will appear during a seven-year end-time great tribulation. As most of you probably realize, this interpretation known as futurism of an end-time seven-year tribulation where a single-man antichrist rules the world is the predominant teaching in today's fallen Protestant churches. And following the futurism, or as it's now called, dispensationalism started by Ribera, there is also preterism started by another Jesuit trying to hide the antichrist, this time not hiding him in the distant future but in the distant past. Just for the record, these facts are not disputed even among Catholic scholars and theologians. The Roman Catholic writer G.S. Hitchcock is recorded as saying, quote, The futurist school founded by the Jesuit Ribera in 1591 looks for the Antichrist, Babylon, and a rebuilt temple in Jerusalem at the end of the Christian dispensation. He goes on to say, quote, The preterist school founded by the Jesuit Alcazar in 1614 explains the revelation by the fall of Jerusalem or by the fall of pagan Rome in 14. AD. Again, that is, the Roman Catholic writer G.S. Hitchcock from the book The Beast and the Little Horn, page 7. So to try to convince the world that the papacy is not the Antichrist, Louis de Alcazar, 1554-1613, devised the Preterist movement and said that the Antichrist and the abomination of desolation had already come and gone in the distant past as Nero and the destruction of Jerusalem or the fall of pagan Rome three and a half centuries later. And with the supposed death of Nero as the Antichrist, all prophecies have been fulfilled and we are now living in the millennial, 1,000-year reign of Christ, if you can stomach that. This is all an apostasy. If you read Daniel 9, 24 through 27 carefully, you will see that the oblation, the sacrificial system of the Jews, was done away with because Christ was the final sacrifice. And to put an exclamation point on it, the temple curtain, one to make Berber envious, was torn in two from top to bottom. Jesus has left the house. He does not live in temples made with human hands. He lives in our hearts. But the modern church teaches that the Antichrist will arrive in a new, rebuilt temple and start up the sacrifices again, only to halfway through betray the Jews and do away with the sacrifice. This is all part of the great deception that has come upon the world. To begin to name the major players involved in this from the Protestant or non-Catholic churches would be a drag on one's patience and possibly missing the mark of spiritual profitability. If any finger pointing is to be called for, which it is, it needs to be pointed back to where it was pointed before and during the Protestant Reformation. It needs to be pointed at the Antichrist who is the papacy, the little horn of Daniel, the lawless one of Paul, and the harlot of Revelation spoken of by John. It is the Antichrist who has deceived the whole world 
and the agents of the Antichrist are the Jesuits, the ones responsible for the blasphemous interpretation of Daniel's 70th week. And this heretic interpretation is not only responsible for hiding the true Antichrist, but also for hiding the true church, who is the Israel of God. But that is a lesson for another time. But if these apostasies weren't enough to deceive the unstudied Christian and casual believer, the exotic myth of a secret catching away rose up from the lab table in or around 1830. According to reports, a young Scottish girl named Margaret MacDonald apparently had a vision or dream about the Lord secretly removing the saved souls from off the earth. This event just so happened to be in a church that Edward Irving, a popular and prominent Scottish pastor, was affiliated with. After Irving unhooked the cords and conduits from this spiritual Frankenstein called the pre-tribulation rapture, the monster took on a life of its own. I can only conjecture as to who is behind this monstrosity lurking in the shadows all along. Was it Bellarmine's invention or some other Jesuit warrior who never received recognition for the greatest concoction of spiritual poison ever invented, but perhaps went on to become Pope as his reward? And what better way to get this into the Protestant church than to coax some young Scottish lass into sharing a fabricated dream or vision with a prominent, though carefully profiled, and ambitious pastor with a large following and esteemed name? And furthermore, how many current evangelical wolves in sheep's clothing are living the dream life for 30 pieces of silver taken from the Vatican? If the Jesuits can't win with open opposition, they'll win with covert infiltration. And what quicker way to infiltrate the Protestant Reformation than to, quote-unquote, buy off the men behind the pulpit. But in order to get back to the truth, we have to turn to Scripture. We have to return to the Word of God. 